Linda. Good morning. I just heard you're going to Costa Rica. Is it true? I heard you were traveling with three other people from around here. How long have you been gone? Three days and two nights? I can go too, right? Add me to the list. I'll go with you. Huh? Wait a minute, Luna. This is a bit of an uproar, isn't it? But I want to go with you. I want to see Costa Rica. Yes, but we've been planning this for a while. I don't know how to answer your request. Just add me to the list. Well, you know it won't be free. You will have to pay for your portion. Huh? You're telling me you want to come with us because you have the money to pay, right? Of course. My husband is getting his quarterly bonus shortly. He will give me some money for this trip. I got it. Well, I'll have to ask the others if they'll let you join us. If they say they don't mind, then I think you can come along. I will talk to them and give you the answer later. Huh? Do you have to follow what others say? We planned this trip together. I can't bring another person without asking them first. Yes, I think you're right. But tell them I'm really excited about this, and I'll be heartbroken if they don't let me come. I don't know why I wasn't invited in the first place. It's only natural for me to join everyone. But between you and me even if they say no, I still come to you. Oh my god. Hi, Luna. Can I talk to you about my trip to Costa Rica? Of course. I talked to the others, and they said you could come, but... Great. But, with a few conditions. Condition? One, you won't be late when we get to the airport. Two, while we are in Costa Rica, you must stay with us and not run away on your own. 3. You don't complain about what the team chooses to do or where we choose to go. It's the majority's decision, not yours. 4. You must pay for your portion of the bill. All these things. What is this? You don't have to treat me like a child. I am an adult. You don't have to worry about anything. Besides, I can handle all of that. Why do you think I can't? Can you really? Of course. Why do you think otherwise? Can't you think of any other times when you've been late or irresponsible? Huh? What about when you come to pick up your daughter from preschool? Teachers always say that you are 30 minutes to an hour late to pick up your daughter. Even though you stay at home all day with nothing to do. It's too bad that now your husband or your mother-in-law has to pick up your daughter. And when the preschool tries to charge you for all the late arrivals, you refuse to pay them and cause a big problem. That's because I paid all the tuition. There shouldn't be any additional costs. But is there a policy where you have to pay extra if you pick up your child late? It's preschool, not free babysitting. They have that policy specifically to avoid people trying to take advantage of them. Why do you think it's now your husband and mother-in-law who have to pick up your daughter? They say if you're late again, they'll make you take your daughter out of their kindergarten. Oh, whatever. So I was late a few times. Seeing that he didn't go to work, I also didn't intend to ask why you didn't pick up your children on time. But what I'm saying is that you tend to be late. But that is completely different. I am looking forward to going to Costa Rica. I won't be late for that. You don't have to worry about anything. And remember, this is a group holiday. We will go sightseeing and do everything together. Tours and everything will be booked in advance. That means you have to stay with the group. Otherwise, you'll still have to pay for your share even if you don't participate. Flight tickets will be placed on the same credit card so I can get the mileage, but you have to pay me back. As this trip is so short we can't buy an all-inclusive package, so you'll also have to pay for everything separately while you're there. That means your hotel room too. Okay, okay, okay. Do not worry. 
I'll have my husband drop me off at your place in the morning when we leave, that way I won't be late. And I promise I'll do whatever you want. It's not like I'm going to try to dump you or anything. What can I do without you? I don't speak Spanish and I don't know anyone there. And my husband will get the bonus, so money is not an issue. I promise. Can I trust you with that promise? Of course. I hope I don't regret this. Luna! We are all here waiting for you. I told you we were leaving at 6 a.m. I told you to be here by 5.45 a.m. Oh, I am sorry. I'm on my way there right now. I'll be there in about 15 to 20 minutes. Just wait a minute. What? We haven't left yet, and you broke your promise. Do not worry. We have plenty of time to get to the airport. If we all leave 20 minutes from now, we'll still be at the airport on time. Yes, yes if the highway is not congested. But now we have to hope we don't hit a car, or we might have an accident. You said you were looking forward to this trip, but you couldn't even reach my house on time. I told you we were leaving at 6. I asked you to be here at 5.45. And now you're telling me you'll show up around 6.20? I cannot do it. Things were really busy at my house this morning. Whatever. Arguing about it won't change anything. Just get here as fast as you can. We will depart at 6.20 whether you are here or not. If you think you can't make it, ask your husband to drive you straight to the airport. I'll be there in a little while. Relax. Luna! Where did you go? We haven't even left the airport yet and you're already running. At least wait until we get to the hotel before you run off on your own. Oh, sorry about that. I just happened to meet the hottest guy. He's tall, dark, and handsome. Huh? He even speaks English. I was afraid he only spoke Spanish, but it is not. I got caught up in a conversation with him. Sorry. Oh my god! We haven't been here for 20 minutes. Try to control yourself. Oh, what's the big deal? We are just talking. And anyway, my husband or kids weren't there to watch. You shouldn't run after men just because your husband isn't here. That's not why any of us came on this vacation. What? Really? Just come back here. We have to go to the hotel and check in. Everyone is waiting for you. Okay. Hey, Luna. Is it okay if I go through your room? Why? For what? I think we've agreed that everyone will relax alone tonight. Do you guys have any plans that I don't know about? We've been together since 6.30 this morning. Don't you think we should have some alone time now? Not that. We've been so busy all day that we haven't had a chance to talk to you about this, but... Looks like you still haven't paid for your portion of the trip. You said your husband will get the bonus the day before the trip so you will pay me the day we leave. But you haven't done it yet. Oh, about that. I'm sorry. But the truth is, I have no money on me. What? Well, my husband's bonus this quarter is a lot less than I thought. So I can't pay you right now. I promise I'll pay you once the trip is over and we're back home. Honestly, I hope you can wait until he gets his next reward, if possible. Luna, have you lost your mind? What you're thinking? Huh? Up until now nothing has asked for any money as we put your flight tickets on the same credit card as everyone else's. But from tomorrow, we will go everywhere to visit and shop. Dining, shopping, sightseeing, and souvenirs. You will have to pay for all of that yourself. So why did you come here with no money? I don't understand how you can purposely travel for three days and not bring any money. And if you have credit card access, that means you can pay our trip back. 
ever heard of a cash advance? So don't give me any excuses. But, Linda. I thought you would pay me everything while I was here. What? I don't have money to pay for this trip, so what should I do? If that's the case, you shouldn't be on the trip in the first place. The plane ticket has already been purchased, so I cannot return. Plus, that would be too embarrassing. I will pay you later. Speaking of money, I need you to give me some pocket money tomorrow morning, otherwise I won't be able to enjoy this trip. Oh, and make sure you give me US dollars. I'll convert it myself if I need to. Luna, can't you hear what I say? You are too selfish. Listen, I'm walking on the beach right now. Let's not talk about this now. Why are you just telling me that now? You should not waste the evening in your room. Walking on the beach at sunset is so romantic. I wonder what if I would meet someone special. Talk to you later. Luna! Luna! Where are you? We're all downstairs waiting for you. You're still sleeping, aren't you? Oh, sorry. I forgot to tell you that I won't be joining you guys today. Have fun without me. What? You know the handsome guy I met at the airport who speaks English? I met him again when I was walking along the beach last night. That's destiny. What did you do? You won't believe it, but he's in the same hotel as us. I will spend the day with him. So enjoy the tour without me. What are you talking about? He told me he would pay everything for me today. Spending the day with him is much more fun than spending the day with you guys. Luna, what's wrong with you? You are married and you have a daughter. What are you thinking when you spend the day with another man? Just because you're in another country doesn't mean you can cheat on your husband. I'm going to your room now. I will put an end to this. You can try. But I'm not in my room. I spent the night with him in his room. What? He's holding me in his arms right now. Luna. I don't want you to bother us, so I won't tell you his room number. I can't believe you can do that. Don't act like it's a big deal. Look, I'll see you guys tomorrow before we go to the airport. Everything's gonna be alright. Enjoy the trip. I will stay in the arms of the handsome guy until then. Whatever. I do not care anymore. I won't text you anymore. We will do everything according to plan. If you do not show up at the locations at the specified time, we will treat you as a no-show. And if you're not there, that means you're alone. I won't take care of you anymore. That sounds great. You should have done it in the first place. Goodbye. Hi, Linda. I'm in the hotel lobby. Where's everybody? I came early once. Luna? I need to return the key to you so you can check out for me. Otherwise, they will expect me to pay the bill. Paying for your room? Why are you surprised? I told you I have no money. With this hotel, you pay when you check out, right? That's why they keep your driver's license when you sign up, right? You can't get it back until you pay them, right? So you have to pay me. You promised to pay me everything while we were in Costa Rica, remember? No, I didn't say that. And anyway, we're home. Huh? You said you would be traveling alone, so we asked the hotel to pay for your room separately from the rest. It seems natural since you are actually no longer a member of our group. What? Wait. Did you return home? We got off the plane and went home. What? How can it happen? The schedule says we'll meet in the hotel lobby at 5 o'clock. I arrived early. Yes. 5 a.m. Checkout time at a hotel is not afternoon. If you stay at the hotel, they will probably charge you for an extra day. Huh? Let's take a closer look at the schedule I gave you. 
It said we would take our flight home early in the morning because it was much cheaper. I guess you didn't read it, did you? What? If that's the case, you must have noticed that I wasn't there when you arrived at the meeting point in the morning. Why don't you text me or come to my room to wake me up? I already told you why. I said I won't text you anymore. And I told you that if you don't show up at the locations at the specified times, we will treat you as if you weren't with us. We assume you're already with your new man and he'll pay your hotel bill and help you get home. Don't try to blame me for your current situation. But, Linda. You know I have no money on me. I recommend pulling out your credit card. Um. I asked your husband about it. He says he doesn't want you to carry cash in case it gets lost or stolen. But he said you have a credit card. Pay for your room and airfare with your credit card. About that. I didn't tell my husband, but... I used up my credit card to buy new clothes and accessories for this trip. I have no way to pay for anything. Well, that's not my problem. If you need help, call your husband. Huh? I can't believe you think you can travel to Costa Rica and not pay a dime. Linda, please. I will pay you as soon as I can get back home. I've heard that before. I am no longer related to you. Like I said before, if you want to help, try asking your husband. Oh my god. Oh, talk about your husband. He comes to the airport to pick you up when we land. What? Looks like he can read schedules much better than you. Anyway, he seemed pretty angry that you weren't there with us. And when he asked us why you weren't there, we told him exactly why. What's the reason? That you were too busy in the arms of a handsome man instead of sticking to our schedule. I told him everything you told me. I also showed him the message you sent me. What did you do? Why? Why would you do that to me? Then, Luna came home three days later than expected. I suppose the first thing she did was come over to my house and start berating me. But not so. It's completely opposite. When she finally returned home, she was scolded by many people. Because her credit card has expired and their bank account is empty, her husband is unable to help her in this situation. Finally, she called her parents and asked them to give her some money to pay the bills and go home. Things might not have been so bad if Luna's husband hadn't called them and told them she was in Costa Rica with another man. Angry that they had to bail her out of her situation and upset that she cheated on her husband and daughter, her parents never spoke to her again after that. After some time, Luna and her husband got divorced and custody of the children went to her husband. Her husband had suspected her of being unfaithful over the past few years. In the end, Luna received absolutely nothing in the divorce, and on top of that still had to pay child support for her husband. She had to move to a small, shabby apartment and get a job cleaning public restrooms just to make ends meet. It's been a while since anyone around here has seen or heard from her. But if you've ever seen a woman crying while cleaning a public restroom, it's probably Luna. Hey, Kai! Where are you? Hello, Mr. Gavin. Right now I'm cleaning my house. What? Cleaning? You kidding me? Everyone's at the office except you. At the office? Today is Sunday, right? Was there some kind of emergency? You didn't know? Today we have a barbecue with Tom from IT Company. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know about it. I'll go there immediately. Yes, whatever. We're gonna get in the car now and go. By the time you get here, it'll be too late. Um, you really are useless, aren't you? There are certain basic responsibilities that come with being a human being. You think that just showing up to work is enough? Well, you do, don't you? No, I just really didn't know about the plans for today. I'm really sorry. All right, well, it's been half a year since you joined us and I've got to ask you. 
Have you been communicating properly with your coworkers? I've been trying my best, yes. So then why didn't you know about the plans for today? You know what? Screw it! Did you know you're the only one at our company without a proper education? No wonder you don't mix well with everyone else. Even still, it's surprising. I only hired you because you came recommended by Steve. He's famous in our industry. I had no idea I would get someone who didn't even graduate from high school. Even if you could do your job. No high school diploma? Our reputation would be in the gutter if people found out. I'm really sorry. I'm not attacking you, don't get me wrong. You probably just didn't graduate because your family is a poor or something, right? Honestly, I want to be charitable towards people like you with no hope of success. The thing is, my company is full of people from top-tier colleges. Naturally, since I'm the one who chose them. I'm planning to more than double our employees and frankly I want nothing but elites here. I don't know if you're gonna make the cut. I'll do my best to not get in the way then. Trust me, I'm not expecting anything special from you. Just make sure you earn your salary's worth. Hey, Kai! Why did you decide by yourself to go ahead with the task? Hello, Mr. Gavin. Sorry, what is this about? I didn't give the go-ahead in the chat, so why'd you start working on it? There was no reply in the chat, so yesterday I asked you directly and you said to go ahead with it. Really? I said that? What? So it's my fault now? You're gonna blame the boss for something that you did? No. I mean... Sometimes in business there are cases if he said, she said. That's why at our company we handle things in chat. Asking directly just because you didn't get a reply in chat it's completely out of line. Yes, but... There was no answer in the chat, so... Even though I asked twice in chat... I'm the boss. Do you understand that? I'm not here only to deal with you. There's something called priorities. So don't be surprised if sometimes I can't respond right away. I'm really sorry. This really sucks, honestly. Ugh, you know what? I'm done. Just stop coming to work, please. Just seeing your face is going to make me angry. Oh. So I'm fired. Yup. Since your work attitude is awful, we have a proper reason for it. We don't need useless people here. Really? Okay. I get it. Oh, you get it? Wonderful. So glad you're finally understanding things. Actually, I'm glad to. I was getting tired of you being so rude. It's actually perfect timing. Perfect timing? Yes. Actually, I've been thinking of starting my own company. Well, I guess the timing is perfect for both of us then. By the way, you actually think that a company started by someone who didn't even graduate high school is going to succeed? And I hate to say it, but... No one even likes you. Someone who can't even get along with coworkers starting their own company. You do realize you were getting left out all this time, right? Yes, I do. But the only person who was doing that to me was you. Then why were you by yourself all the time? No one talking to you at lunch. If there was an employee event, you were always the only one not there. If people actually liked you, you would have found out about the events, right? That was all you're doing behind the scenes. I know you were trying to get me to quit. Whenever you weren't around the other staff were actually really nice to me. Quit with the bluffing. See you later, you poor, uneducated loser. Oh, by the way, don't tell anyone you work here, okay? The idea that we hired someone like you is pretty embarrassing. Hey Kai, what did you do? Suddenly all my employees quit. All of them? Congratulations! Huh, I'm asking what you did. Every single employee, all six of them are gone. How did you trick them into leaving? Please don't say it like that. Everyone was looking for another job. I was only giving them some advice. 
Then they asked if they could join my company. All of them are working for me now. What? For you? Why would they work for you? I get it. You must have paid them extra to join you. No. Actually, I didn't. It doesn't matter. Thanks to you, I'm actually in a lot of trouble now. The way things are, I won't be able to deliver anything on time. They're using up their paid vacations and not coming into the office. Give me back my damn employees now. It's really not my decision to make. Everyone quit for their own reasons. For example, that you orchestrated some sly plot to harass them. That you were aggressive and forceful, not paying their overtime. Or that you made them bring you groceries or clean your house on their days off. Who would go back to a boss like that? Listen. I think you've gotten a bit overconfident since starting out on your own. Don't think that you're going to survive with that attitude. I have a lot of connections. There's a lot more trust in me than with someone like you came from nowhere. Out of respect to Steve, I have been quiet up until now, but... Now I'm going to tell him everything. Uh, okay. Huh? You're fine with that? I mean, Steve is my brother. What? Uh... Wait a second. Steve is your brother? Yep. But your last name's... He's my half-brother. We have the same mother. Also, I helped him a bit when he started his company. Even though I didn't graduate from high school, I'm good at programming and web development. So why the heck did you join my company? Because I wanted more office experience. I think my brother and friends probably only gave me work out of kindness, so I wasn't confident when it came to starting my own company. Then my brother told me someone he knows is starting a company and I should try to get a job there. So that's how I came to suffer through this ridiculous experience with you. Seriously? I had no idea you were his brother. I know, right? To tell you the truth, I actually had a reason for being tough on you. I guess I wanted to teach you how hard the real world is. I wasn't trying to hurt you. I was only trying to help. When your brother introduced you to me, he said to just fire you if you weren't useful to me. So that's basically what I was planning. I see. So it was really my brother's instructions. Well, not really. I wasn't just following his instructions. Well, for me, it's all in the past, so I really don't care anymore. I don't think I'm going to be gossiping about you to my brother either. Well, there you go! Steve's brother is exceptional after all! Hey, I know you could be very forgiving. So I want to ask something of you, if that's okay. Is there nothing you could do to help my current situation? Like, maybe you can convince my employees to come back? Oh, wow! I don't know! Little me who hasn't even graduated from high school. No! Come on! This is something that only you can do, Kai! I honestly apologize for everything that's happened. So, I'm asking politely. Can you help? I understand. You understand? I don't want your customers to find themselves in trouble, so... Okay. Really? That's really great! Thank you! And in exchange for that... All of your company's work will be transferred over to my company. What? You're trying to take over my company? Taking over? That's not the right phrase. Let's just say that you're handing it off to me. It's the same thing. Don't mess with me. Who the heck would hand their company over to you? Well, you can't manage it on your own, can you? It's best that you just close your business and leave the rest to me. Oh, and I think you should begin to relearn things again from the start. For example, people skills. Ultimately, Gavin found himself unable to rectify his circumstances. Just before his company was about to make deliveries to its customers, he came to my office pleading for help. I'm certain he didn't anticipate his entire workforce resigning simultaneously. 
however, that's the extent to which they were fed up with Gavin's conduct. In my situation, it boiled down to straightforward harassment regarding my lack of high school graduation. When it came to his preferred employees, he would frequently contact them during their scheduled time off. It appears he genuinely believed that individuals would find joy in being included in such a manner. Naturally, this was nothing more than exasperating for everyone except him. I believe there's nothing amiss with the boss attempting to cultivate a friendship with an employee. Nevertheless, there comes a juncture where a boundary must be established to uphold the employer-employee dynamic. Following this incident, Gavin found himself unable to place trust in anyone anymore. He relocated back in with his parents, and from what it seems, he never ventures outside the house. In spite of all that transpired, I'm grateful that I gained the confidence to launch my own business, partly due to Gavin's influence. Essentially, I appreciate that he aided me in acquiring valuable office experience. I'm certain I'll never be able to erase him from my memory. As an example of what to avoid, of course. Hey Iris. What are you doing? Are you at home or out? I'm at home, Ken. That's good to hear that. Has mom already arrived? Does she seem like she's all right? Yeah. She just got here. I'm just bringing her things in now. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Sorry, dear. I left everything for you to handle with that. Don't worry about it. I know you've been busy with work. It's not like you could have really done much about it, right? I mean, yeah, but still. Today is the day my mom's going to start living with us. I just wish I could have been able to help out in some way. Right. What's that? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Are you sure you're going to be okay on your own? I know mom has some heavy things in her luggage. So be careful and not trying to carry too much. Okay, I'll be fine. There's nothing to worry about. I've got some movers who are helping carry the really big things. So I don't have to try to lift them myself at all. Honey, you've got a day off work tomorrow, right? If there's things we don't really know where to put yet, you can help us figure the remainder out tomorrow. Okay, I'll do that. But please be sure to at least get the bed together. You know mom's got a bad back, right? Having her sleep on something even a bit hard would really do a number on her. Yeah, I know. You've asked me about it countless times already. I already got the bed frame put together before she arrived. The mattress should be arriving this afternoon as well. So there shouldn't be a problem. That's good to hear, Iris. Thanks a lot for dealing with all of that. I don't have work to stay late today so I should be coming home on time. I love it. Oh, do you think you could stop by the store on your way home? What? Why didn't you go shopping just yesterday? We should have plenty of food at home already. Yes, we do. But your mom is telling me that she really wants a steak for dinner. But we don't have meat in the fridge. I'm kind of busy to deal with the mattress, so… Can you just leave the house for a bit and go buy some steaks? It's not that hard of a problem to solve now. Excuse me? What? Is there something wrong with that? Are you really fine with letting your mom stay at our house alone? That seems like it would be something to worry about, don't you think? At least I feel concerned about it. I don't know what you mean. What's there to be concerned about? I mean she's going to start living with us now, and she's been to our house a number of times before already. I really don't see what the problem is here. I still haven't gotten to put the lock on my bedroom door yet. That's supposed to be arriving today. I'm not about to leave her alone in the house until I can make sure I can lock my room first. Wait. Are you being serious? You're actually intending to install a lock on your door? Yeah. You don't even trust my mom? Mom's going to be sad if she knows that. This isn't a matter of whether your mom is going to be sad or not. It's about my own privacy. I've had to deal with her going into my room without my permission before. 
and I am not about to deal with it again. Maybe she hurts herself on something in my room. I can't afford to take responsibility for it. I don't have that kind of money. I've told you this before. Why can't you just talk to her about it? She'll understand if you just try talking to her. Don't be so stubborn and just try to communicate for once. She's family. But she's your mother. She certainly doesn't respect me like I'm her family. Did you forget about how she ripped up my clothes last time? That was an accident. Are you really still holding a grudge against her for that? Are you really so persistent? Those were very important clothes to me whether accident or not. I have a right to want to secure my things anyway. I am not going out until the lock for my door arrives. If you aren't going to go by what your mom wants, then she'll just have to get it herself. Are you fine with that? What? You're just being mean to her. You really want her to go shopping after she's already exhausted from moving then. You should go get the steak your mom wants. And tell her that she'll have to wait until you come home. Fine, whatever. I'll just go to the store then come home. Is that okay? Yeah, I'll see you when you get home. Make sure to tell mom to text me if there's anything else she wants to eat. Okay. Don't worry about it. In the meantime, I'll get everything cleaned up over here. Just try to actually get along with her, okay? Yeah, I know. Hey, Iris. What are you doing? What? I got a text from mom. She texted you? What's this? She hasn't seen you all day and she was starting to wonder about what was going to be done about lunch. What are you talking about? She hasn't said a thing to me. Well, I know that you've been doing work in your room this whole time. But isn't it hard to hear her calling you? Actually, you should think about her for a bit. I don't know what you're talking about. We just saw each other in the living room. And at that time she didn't say a word to me about lunch. Yesterday she even told me that she was planning to go out today. Oh, you don't know. Those plans fell apart apparently. That's why she's still in the house. That's why she's asking about how you haven't been out of your room. The least you could do is have lunch with her, couldn't you? Her plans having been scrapped so mom's been lonely. Look. I'm sorry to hear that her plans got cancelled. But I can't plan my own schedule around that. I was under the impression she was going to be gone for much of the day, so I don't have anything prepared for her. What? You're telling me she hasn't eaten anything for lunch at all? Well, yes. What did you expect? We've been eating lunch separately this whole week. You're kidding, right? Why haven't you been preparing anything for lunch for her? Have you not been thinking of her at all? No. Far from it. In the very first day she spent here, I asked her if she wanted me to prepare something for her. But she just told me that she would make something for herself. What are you talking about? So mom's just been alone this whole week? I can't believe how cold you're being to her. What? I have a job that requires that I work in my room. I don't normally eat in the afternoon. I might have a light snack. This is how my work days have gone for ages. What's been going on for ages can't just stay the same now that mom's here. Come on. Can you at least spend some time with her? Why do you think she's living with us in the first place? It's not like she's living here to be alone. No, she's living here because she wants to be with you. And I can't even be entirely sure of that to begin with. You're the one who brought up the idea of her living with us in the first place. I certainly wasn't asking for this. Don't say things like that. I'm the eldest son in this family. It's been my responsibility to take care of mom ever since dad died. Don't you remember that? Yes, I already know. But we talked about this before. 
I clearly explained that my job keeps me in my room and that I wouldn't be able to leave it for the whole day. I also told you that I had no intention of trying to change that. And you told me that that would be fine. Don't try to tell me you forgot? Yes, sure. I do remember. But it's not that hard to even do the bare minimum to not let her. I'm not just letting her sit there. She's not a doll. She's free to do what she likes as long as it doesn't involve my room. She even told me she wanted to make her own lunch. I'm not refusing to make her a meal if she wants it. But she just wanted to deal with her lunch on her own. And since she didn't want my help with lunch, I just naturally went back to work. Plus we're still eating breakfast and dinner with her. On top of it, all I'm still dealing with all of the housework. You're the one who's staying at home after all. It's not like we can have mom start doing stuff like the housework. Excuse me? Have you forgotten that I have a job just like you do? I may work at home, but work is work. All right, I'm sorry. It doesn't change the fact that mom is lonely. Starting tomorrow, make sure to at least show your face once during the day. I would, but I can't exactly go home in the middle of the day. Fine, whatever. But only for a little bit each day, I still have work to do. I don't want to hear any more complaints after this. Yeah, I'll be sure to tell mom as well. Why am I hearing that after mom went through all the trouble to invite one of her friends over? Mom said you just tried to chase her friend out of the house. What? Chase her friend out? I have no idea what you're talking. I just asked them to talk a little quieter. Nothing else. And that's what I mean by you chasing them out. You shouted at them with a super angry expression. What else were they going to do after that? What are you talking about? I did nothing like that. I just asked them normally without even raising my voice. I don't want to hear your excuses. What is wrong with you? Why are you so intent on butting heads with my mother? What has she done to deserve this from you? Wait. Hold on a second. I know just how important your mom is to you. But I don't see why you suddenly feel like it's fine to not pay any attention to anything I say. I am your wife. Did you forget that? I know that but a wife and a mother are two very different positions. There should be no problem with me only listening to one person's story. I see. Well, there's nothing else I need to talk to you about. What? I mean you've clearly heard all from your mom, right? And clearly you're believing everything she says. So what's the point of me saying anything at all? Look, just this once I'll listen to what you have to say. Oh, how magnanimous. Anyway, you remember what I told your mom this morning, right? We were right in front of you as we were talking. I told her that today I had a really important online conference. So I would need her to be quiet. I do remember you saying that. And yet despite all that without even so much as warning me, your mother brings one of her friends over. Not only that but after her friend arrived, she repeatedly knocked at my door and tried to call for me. And you shouted at them just because of that? Couldn't you have just gotten some drinks for them? It's just basic hospitality. That's exactly what I did when her friend first arrived. However I had to return to my room shortly after as the meeting was starting soon. In the middle of the meeting, they called loudly for me and the TV was on with the volume set really high. So all I did was ask them, can you please be quiet a bit? But hold on. Are you sure you didn't say things more rudely? You must not embarrass my mother in front of one of her friends. What sort of embarrassment are you even talking about? I specifically asked her at the start of the day to try to stay quiet and explained perfectly. Despite all that, she clearly didn't care about what I wanted and did the exact opposite. Who's the one being unreasonable here? But there's still the problem of how you said it. 
If you had such an important meeting, couldn't you have just gone to some other workspace or something? Why are you so determined to make this my fault? This is my house. I had this all planned out in advance, and I clearly requested what I needed too. Why am I the one who has to meet with her demands? If she wanted to bring a friend over, she should have at least told me in advance. I even asked her about that specifically. And do you remember how the both of you agreed? Yes, I remember that. But plans might always change. But why can't she tell us about it? What's so hard about that? I am still in the house after all. Okay, just stop it. I still have work to do. And I can't leave it any longer if we're going to talk about this. No, hold on. We're clearly not done talking, Iris. What's going on? I heard everything from Mom. What? I had no idea you were this terrible of a woman. I still have no clue what you're talking about. You're not going to get by playing dumb after how much you've pestered and picked on Mom. Pestered and picked on? What are you talking about? Stop trying to play all innocent. I'm here being serious with you. I've heard all about all of the terrible things you've done for Mom. There's no point trying to deny it anymore. I ask yet again. What sort of terrible things are you saying? Please stop speaking so vaguely and actually tell me. My mom came crying to me earlier today complaining about everything you've been doing. She's just had to endure your horrible treatment this whole time. What? I'm so disappointed with you. We should get a divorce. Really? Have you thought about it? Yeah, from what my mom told me, I can't stay with you anymore. Whatever. I have been tired of you too. But just let me prepare the luggage. Without this, I can't work. What? You're still thinking about your work now. Shouldn't you apologize for what you did? I'm not gonna do that. I'm not wrong for anything. I also think we shouldn't live together. You'd better do that with your dear mom. So. Bye now. After that, Ken filled out his end of the divorce papers with no further complaints and I was able to get them filed with no issues. His mother did rifle through all of my things without any care for what she did to them. So I filed suit for everything she damaged. They agreed to settle out of court and pay for what they did. I might just end up moving away. Without my income, Ken can't handle the mortgage, utilities bills. So they managed to get a small cheap apartment somewhere. Just getting rid of they two out of my life is the best bless for me.